I has this many fingers. Engage fluo injectors. Engaging fluo injectors. Fluo reactors at 80%, sir. Fluo containment field is destabilizing. Emergency fluo containment protocols now. All hands brace for impact. Brace for impact in three, two, one. <laughs> What's good, motherfuckers? We're back with another episode of World 1-1 One One Podcast. Uh, before we get into all the meat and taters, uh, you can and should, as always, find us at our home at world11.podbean.com. All spelled out, all one word. You can also uh, pick up all the fun stuff when we're uh, playing live on uh, Twitch over at uh, twitch.tv slash world11podcast. All spelled out for you. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And uh, we've also got that fancy YouTube channel thing going on where if you miss us on Twitch, you can you can catch all the replays up on YouTube as well as some of the other extra goodies like unboxings and other sort of things. So that's all there. But with all that out of the way, everyone has a lovely glass poured of fluo and we are ready to start. So <laughs> choose your fighter. I am, as always, your host, Larry the Bearded Wonder. Joining me this evening... The only man that I know that can only get an erection when angry, which is pretty much always, Michael Brown. Why you gotta call me out like that? <laughs> you promised you wouldn't say anything. I was kind of expecting you to go, I hate you, and go, he's got a heart on. <laughs> God damn it. I'm gonna talk to the HR de- department. <laughs> You have a complaint, you can file it with the HR department. Uh, and uh, joining us off camera but on mic this evening, uh, the whiplash wonder, Kathleen. I, I, I just, I, I don't know how I can follow up after that <laughs> introduction for Michael, and I'm just, I picked the wrong week to come back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not on camera because I'm <laughs> blushing like a freaking fire truck over here. Damn. We're clearly off to a roaring start, and I haven't even been drinking. Uh. Hey, oh, Larry, Larry, <laughs> Larry. Damn it, Larry. Pretty much. Oh. I'm going to say, you should know this is par for the course. So. Uh, nah, you haven't gone that far before. I don't know. Be glad Eddie's not here after the conversation that we had yesterday. That is true. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. All right, we're done. That that was totally <laughs> going to come up if you turned up tonight. I know. What <laughs> conversation? You scroll up in shadow ways. You'll find it eventually. <laughs> uh, you may well. wish you hadn't. <laughs> All right, not going to listen to you. I'm going to forget this part. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I was probably going to forget in about 15 seconds anyway. But Pretty much. Don't worry, I'll remember and I'll screenshot it and send it to you direct. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, moving on, everybody. It's good to see you all this week. Uh, it is good. It's It's been a decent week. I haven't gotten to play as much shit as I wanted to, but it's been a decent week. It's been busy. So, But I did get to play some stuff, and I imagine you guys got to play some Kathy, I know you got to play some stuff, and I know Michael was playing some stuff about ten minutes ago. So, <laughs> with all that said, let's get straight to... Video games. Kathy, what the fuck have you been playing? And I don't want to go too deep on that one specific title because I actually want to dig deep on it in the back half. Sure. So not much. It's the same old stuff. Just Apex, Fortnite, and uh, Minecraft. Been just uh, Minecraft's been kind of uh, the big focus right now on my channel just because I'm just really kind of got back into it. And I, it's one of those games that sucks you in, and I'm just like, oh, let's go explore. And yeah. We had some saga in my game. I accidentally made like 20 million iron swords, used up all my. It was a total accident when I did it. And then it was like, shit. <sighs> don't ask. I don't even want to go into it. It was embarrassing. So now the big joke is we're going to make a whole chest full of um, 
iron hose. But I, I was happy yesterday. I was streaming and I didn't die once in Minecraft. There you go. But the true, the but the same thing cannot be said for Ori in the Blind Forest, which was the other game I really played, and I finally finished it, and I have some thoughts, mm -hmm. and they're not necessarily the same thoughts that the entire group feels. That's why I like this group. Ori. So, yes, but it's over. It's done with. Yeah. So what's what's the next big one you want to tackle? Um, I'm probably either looking at, um, Hat and Time, or, um, or Celeste. Those are the two that are on my list of games I'm interested in. And only because my daughter has been playing them. You see, this, this is interesting, because all the games you guys have been suggesting to me, I've given to my daughter to play. And she has found a love for them. She loved Ori. She was looking forward to the new Ori coming out. I thought I was going to be in the same boat. Nah. But she's been... But she also, I think, had an easier time with it than I did. And again, I know you want to talk about that later, so... But... Yeah, no, I mean... I will say... I suspect given your take on Ori... I don't know that you're going to have a good time with uh, Celeste. And I know we kind of talked about that last night during my stream. So, yeah, I don't know. But, yeah. but I, I, again, it, these are games that I've gotten. Um, a lot of them I've been able to pick up for free on the Epic Game Store. So it's like, why not play them? Right. So, you know, there, there's just... I mean, if yeah. you've got it, I would... I would definitely suggest tinkering around with it at the very least. Yeah, I mean... Just I'm don't not... commit yourself to sticking to it if you're not having fun with it. Well, I don't do that with any game. Honestly, it's, it's like that with a lot of games. I mean, if I'm not having fun with the game, I'm not going to go back to it. Like Doom. I know you've been getting on my case that I need to finish Doom for the Let's Play, but honestly, I didn't care for it all that much. It was okay! And yeah. it, but it just doesn't... It wasn't... It gets to a point where it's like, eh... No, I don't care anymore. And I, um, I think the same thing with... Oh, what's the other game I've left unfinished? Well, not Bioshock. Bioshock I do. Was it Rhyme? Is it Rhyme, yes. I just haven't really had the urge to play. Don't get... Now, it's not because it's a bad game or a game that I'm not liking. I just haven't had the urge because I thought I was done with it and I didn't realize there was more to it. So I just haven't... Rhyme is one of those that you definitely want to have yourself in the right frame of mind to play. Yeah. That being said, I know you were just starting Chapter 2, if I remember right. Correct. And I will tell you, Chapter 2 is definitely the low light of Rhyme. Yeah. And it's, it's a shame it's that early on, because it's a real, it's a real fast turnoff. But okay. if you can push through Chapter 2, which it is doable... I mean, once once you kind of get a rhythm for the the pacing and the uh, the big kind of ominous you know bird fear creature thing coming and getting you, and you know how much time you have to get from one cover to the next, it's it's manageable. But like I said, if you can get through chapter two, everything past that, fucking spectacular. Okay, because I liked chapter one. I just didn't realize there was more to it. So here I am thinking, oh, game done. No. There's more. Okay. Yeah. So, no. and I was like, alright, we'll go back to it. I just haven't gotten back to it because a lot of it too goes back to Fortnite. A lot of people like to watch me play Fortnite. I do like Fortnite because I like having that sense of, ooh, challenges to complete, which is where I really like Fortnite. Not so much the game itself, it's the fact that, ooh, there's things I can accomplish, challenges I can get, and then things I can get from those accomplishments. And maybe that reward is what I like more than than some of these other games where some of the there has to be some sort of reward and sometimes the reward is not there yeah. so but I do have to get back into Ryan I do want to get back into that game and then again Bioshock still need to get back into one Amen. of those but you know time not? work whatever okay life yeah so I feel you. Um, and then 
that leads the question to Michael. What have you been playing? What are the um, highlights? I started Monster Boy. Um, it's like Monster Boy and the Cursed something or other. I don't even remember. Yeah. Um, and it's got a lot of promise to it, but it starts out really slow and it just wasn't grabbing me at first. So I decided I'll just come back to it later. Okay. Um, I, I'm only like maybe 20 minutes into it. And then I started playing Rad. What is it? It's called Rad, just R-A-D. And this game, like, I didn't know if I was going to like it at first. I had no idea what it was. It just looked interesting. But imagine if Dead Cells and Hob had a baby, okay? And then passed it off to Brutal Legend to race. Interesting. <laughs> what is it on? It's on Switch. I'm playing it on is Switch it? right now. Yeah. Okay. It's it's a roguelite, um, isometric view, where the whole premise is something happened and the whole world is an irradiated wasteland. And okay, now I know why it's called Rad. Yeah, and basically your character is given the ability to absorb radiation, to mutate, and given a baseball bat sent out in the wilderness. <laughs> and. Uh, like, there's three characters you can choose from at the beginning. Just random boy, random girl, punk boy. And with, like, a bohawk and shit like that. And I'm really enjoying it. Like, it's it's challenging, but it's... Like, some of the mutations are both really funny and really clever. Um, I've had a lot of fun with it so far. Okay. I'm gonna stick that on my wish list, then. Yeah. Like, as I said, I... I because I saw it a long time ago, but I, I think before I had a Switch, I saw it advertised on the uh, the PlayStation Network, and I was kind of caught my eye, but I never paid attention to it. And I think it went on sale recently, so I was like, "All right, fuck it, give me." Okay. And I, I've been sitting on it for a couple weeks, and I finally actually got around to trying it out. Um, but as I said, like the there's an announcer guy that's constantly talking. Every time you pick up money, he it's like Jack Black basically from brutal legend just right like every time you pick up something he's like moolah and shit like that <laughs> so it's it's really funny um, okay and like the, all the creatures they are basically just weird mutant creatures and shit like that um and basically every board is randomly generated but there are certain things that are going to be um like automatic each time such as you'll have to go through and activate three like uh, checkpoint type things right. to actually open the the way to the end, and there'll always be a minor boss fight in order to get through that last part. Um, right, there's some stable features, but the order in which they're hit is rearranged. Yeah, kind of all the dead cells. Yeah. Okay. Bring it behind that. It's been a lot of fun. I guess I'm, I'm actually for it out of curiosity because I'm staring at it at full price, twenty bucks. Uh, I believe I paid fifteen. I I don't know. I'll have to look a little closer at it and see whether or not I want to pay full price on that or if that's going to wait don't, for us. Don't pay full price. Okay. Like that, It's, it's great, ready. but it's not the best thing I've ever played. But as I, said, it, 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 as I said, it reminds me a lot of a weird cross between Dead Cells and Hob. Because it, it <laughs> plays a lot like Hob. The overhead and your movement is slightly floaty, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, but like the the random items that you find and things like that, the random mutations, they're as I said, they're different every time. Um, Interesting. And then there are certain things you can like buy from people that will give you like passive mutations, such as the the to where fire won't hurt you anymore, or you can walk through acid water now and instead of getting hurt by it. Um, there was one mutation I got that literally turned your bat arm into another, like, a, a monster that is holding its own bat. <laughs> you know? And so as you, like, sit there and run around, it's doing this, like, <laughs> you know, and, and it's, it's I, it was funny as shit. I was cracking up. But That's then, awesome. yeah, at the same time, your character was twice as powerful with that mutation. Oh, of course. Um, God, even better. Yeah, and as I said, like, there's others where uh, each mutation has a very distinctive look that it mutate. Like, 
There's one where you can fire uh, mind bullets. They literally say mind bullets. And basically, <laughs> your brain pops up through the top of your head. Um, like, there's another one where you got these spore things hanging off your back. Damn. Uh, just as it it's all kinds of weird shit. Like, the one that I have in, in the campaign I'm running right now is, uh, it's a boomerang arm. Your arm basically is L-shaped, bladed, and you literally tear it off and throw it. <laughs> nice. And so, yeah, so every time you throw it, your character's like, oh, you know, and then it comes back and he attacks it. I don't know, I've had a lot of fun with it. That reminds me, if you ever listened to or read, um, I can't remember if I told you about this or not, uh, it was a story called Playing for Keeps. No. So it was by Mer Lafferty, and uh, it's about a bunch of people with, like, what would have been deemed useless superpowers and uh, <clears throat> one of the characters has the power to detach their limbs and grow them back essentially and you know fu- fundamentally useless as powers go but you know they, they find a way to make it useful at least at one point throughout the, the story but I think you'd really dig it because the it's about the uh, the main character uh, Keepsy Branson who owns this bar, and uh, one one night a week, uh, I think it was like uh, Thursdays. They call it Third Wave Thursdays, where all these people come in that have these you know useless superpowers that got rejected by the union of superheroes or whatever it was, and uh, you know it's kind of just a night for them at the bar. But she has one of these useless superpowers. Uh, it being that anything that she owns, she keeps. She cannot be stolen from. Like, it, the the story opens with uh, another character trying to steal something from the lost and found box from her bar, and that character is literally stuck until she mentally releases him. <laughs> I like Look it. Here. Come it's to like... find out, her superpower not so useless. Yeah. She finds that out when somebody tries to kill her, and he's stuck because he tried to take her life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and this is written out then, or? Uh, it was originally released as a free patio book, but I do believe there's a print version as well. Huh. And I do yeah, believe you still get it free. I'll see if I can find a link and send it to you. As Please. a matter of fact, if I find the link, I'll throw it in the show notes too. So, but no, it's super good. Anything by Mer Lafferty is fucking spectacular. She puts out most all of her stuff for free anyway, so. Mm-hmm. So it kind of reminds me of a, uh, there's a show from maybe 10, 15 years ago, a British show called No Heroics. There's a similar concept. Basically, okay. B-list B superheroes, and it's their after, it's the after work, basically. They're hanging okay. out at this bar, and the main heroes are constantly making fun of them. And, like, it's it's actually a pretty funny show. I think they only did one season of it, though. That happens to a lot of the best shows. Uh huh. Yep. Oh. All right. Uh, anything else you want to throw in there that you've been playing that's caught your eye lately? Um, I started Gris or Gree or Gree sort Gris, of focus, yeah. but like I just wasn't in the right frame of mind, and I figured that out really quick. That it's gorgeous, but it just I wasn't I wasn't ready for it. So I was like, I got to come back to this later. Fair enough. Is that soundtrack not spectacular, though? It really is. So pretty. I do want to go back and actually try and find all the collectibles. That I, it's short enough. I I might divert depending on how much longer the messenger takes me. I might divert and actually do maybe like a a two stream sitting to to stream it on our channel. So I, I have the inclination. It's uh, I I just immediately wanted to play it again as soon as I finished. So, but yeah, it, it felt very similar to Journey. I still haven't gotten to play Journey, but that might actually get to change thanks to Lagru. Yeah. We'll see. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I, you might have noticed I changed his name in. A... Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so anybody that's ever listened to Retro Force Go, uh, the original host of that, his name was Dyson, and there was a running joke that apparently he just lived by a magic Goodwill store. Because he forever found all this amazing retro game shit at his local Goodwill. That all the rest, you know, everybody else is like, 
What fucking goodwill do you go to that this shit happens at? This is bullshit. So, but uh, we'll we'll see if that pans out. It's it's up in the air, but maybe, which would be neat. But anyways, so yeah, no, I I do hope you get uh you get yourself into the the right place to to sit down with Chris though. It's it's spectacular. I think you're gonna really dig it when you're there. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Well, I suppose I'll pick it up from there. <coughs> um, the the big one on my list for the week. Uh, I touched on it just briefly last week, but I did finish it actually right after the recording. I I stayed up till three in the morning. I'm like, I must finish this. I need the end of this game. It was so fucking good. Uh, I finished playing Hellblade, and oh, holy shit, just spectacular. Um, the I shared a video in the in the group chat, and my I'm guessing Michael, you didn't watch it yet because I know you were kind of dodging the spoilers. Yeah. Um, but this guy talks about his the 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 one of the big cruxes of this is that the main character Senua has like full blown psychosis, like hears voices, audio and video, uh, visual, you know, hallucinations, the, the works, all sorts of weird shit. And, uh, this, this guy talks about, you know, he's apparently been running his YouTube channel for some time and he's got some semblance of a following. I don't remember the numbers, but sizable, decent. And, um, huge compared to us. I'm going to throw that out there for stipulation's sake. Um, but in any case, uh, he was saying that uh, of any game, this is one that really hit home for him because he personally has lived with psychosis all his life. And he said the representation and the depiction of psychosis in Hellblade is so uh, terrifyingly accurate, it's just brain-bending. The, the way that they they do like the voices how it's you know you're not just hearing a voice coming through the speakers but the way that you kind of hear them coming from like all over the fucking place and that there's a, a bunch of them and that they're all kind of like arguing with each other like some of them are you know kind of helpful and pushing Senua to you know you can do it you've got this kind of thing and others like you're gonna fucking fail and you, why you even bother kind of shit you know just all at the same time you know and he's like it's it's horrifyingly accurate and it's absolutely an exhausting reality to live with um compound that too with he said the the way they depict a lot of the the visual oh, hallucinations almost not quite the right word um but it's as close as i've got uh there there's parts minor spoiler but it's a repeated mechanic um there's parts where say you'll you'll need to get across like a bridge but it's broken and there's just like pieces kind of fucking floating in the air right and uh in order to to get across that bridge you have to move around and find a place where you have a viewpoint where all those pieces line up and it looks like one one reassembled bridge from that angle and just focus on it mentally and visually and it brings the whole thing back together again in reality to where she can, you know, walk across this bridge. But until you you appease that visual hallucination, it's just un- uncrossable to you. And he said, he's like, it it's weird to wrap your head around but real life living with psychosis you get that sort of weird shit where you have to visually and mentally see something a certain way before your brain can process it as reality and you can actually do something with it I'm just like Jesus so but the thematically beyond that you'll you'll see some carryover themes from Gris as it has a lot to do with death and grieving 
Um, it's not quite so heavy handed on the uh, the whole five stages of grief as like Gris or Rhyme is. Those are very blatant and very obvious. Whereas this is more watching somebody that already doesn't have a a stable connection with reality dealing with the loss of a loved one and combine that with the world of Norse mythology to boot um, and she's she's questing to save her her lover from hell and uh, the the end result is I really liked it. I've seen a lot of people that are like, fucking bullshit is that, where she just kind of... The the game has a very tonal 180 shift from what it's presented you the entire way through. Um, But at the same time, I think it functioned really well. I also think, too, because I know a lot of people... uh, I saw a lot of complaints about the... uh, the music selection for the end credits after a game that mentally heavy. But I will say, I think the the lighter, almost poppier tune was a really good choice. I mean, it wasn't like super, super pop kind of thing, but it was definitely a, a much lighter tone. And I think it was a very welcome relief to hit at the end of such a a mentally taxing and absorbing game. I mean, it's... It'll rack your brain in, in playing it. Not not so much of the challenge, but it is just very... It, it can be taxing on your mental health to try and experience it because this game so presents that psychosis, even though it's not a first-person game, you kind of experience that psychosis in a first-person way because of how it presents and so it's it's very very heavy and at no point does it relent it it just lays it on and on and on and it does not let you breathe from that reality it does not let you out of her world one little bit and so you're you're gonna spend a fair bit of time wondering is that actually happening or is she just think it is and in some of it, you know, some of those things are very obvious to pick out, and there are some things you will you will definitely question and never really get a solid answer on. Um, but it's it's extremely intense, but it's very powerful and very very good. Um, added note to the uh, the music, it the final boss fight itself was very interesting. It takes a very different take. Uh, compared to most any other game. Um, and the music into that whole final section was spec-fucking-tacular. Uh, again, a, a big shift in tone, but very fitting for that particular scene. Um, visually, it had a solid shift in that end section, too, um, leading up to Hella. But I, I was super, super excited when I found the soundtrack to Hellblade on Google Play Music. I was like, hell yeah! I'm like, yep played it back that one song is just as excellent as i thought it was going to be and uh side note because i know you're about to you're you're going to be sitting into it probably at some point in the near future the soundtrack to gris is also on google play music as well so which i i have no inclination to listen to the full hellblade soundtrack on its own separate from the game except for that one track the gris soundtrack i have listened to just by itself repeatedly it's so good so, um, but beyond Hellblade, uh, I started puttering with some Dead Cells again because it's actually been a while since I picked it up and played it. Um, I, I was thinking about it going, man, this was like my default game for a long time. And mm-hmm. I've just been, well, I've just been busy, like picking off other shit out of my backlog finally. Mm-hmm. You know, I was just in a mood. I'm like, I'm finally going to get some of this shit played. Fuck everything. It's, it's happening. And so, hence, you know, getting through Gris and Hellblade and finally finishing Gato Roboto and, you know, a, a few other odds and ends. But, um, man, I was, I, I picked it up and, like, 
I, I feel very oddly unfamiliar with my controls all of a sudden. It, it took me <laughs> a hot minute to get back to them. I'm like, this is fucking weird. But I'm super pumped for the DLC to come tomorrow. Oh, I want it. I found the open. I found the entrance to one of the new sections already. Oh, so they've yeah. loaded it in, in a patch, so it's it's there. It's just waiting to unlock tomorrow with uh, with my five dollar uh, purchase. So, which again, I I have no qualms about paying five bucks for that. Not with as much game as I've gotten out of that over the last year and a half since it yeah, came out. Yeah, you've gotten a lot. Oh God, hundreds of hours, just absurd. Yeah, you played. <laughs> played it a lot yes. so but I'm, I'm happy to throw some dollars at them especially for what they charge for that game that's more than reasonable um, on top of that too we got some more Dead Cells uh, animated shorts which all of their animated shorts are so fucking delightful There's I really more than one? oh yes <laughs> oh, <I'm laughs> <just kidding. laughs> uh, you, you need to go check out Motion Twins YouTube channel because they've done a lot of those shorts for various uh, promotions and like previews. They did it for Rise of the Giant and a few other just odds and ends. They're, they're fucking awesome. I really want just like a full-blown animated series where I get, you know, a couple of five-minute shorts, st- little three to four-minute standalone shorts a week would be just amazing. Or just give me like one five-minute short a week it's its own little, you know, goofy non sequitur story in Dead Cells world with that anime. I'm I would be in love, head over heels. That that's automatic subscription to whatever. You can charge me money for that. I will buy it. Like I would totally spring for a whole collection of those shorts on a DVD happily because they're all just as good as that. Like they have awesome action and just phenomenal animation. And just that perfect little touch of humor in there, in places where you just don't expect it. So, it has a certain Looney Tunes esque vibe to it. <laughs> All right, and, yeah, I'll have to hunt those down. Yeah. So, so you'll you'll adore them. I'm shocked you haven't seen them. I'm a little stunned that you missed that. Holy shit! I didn't realize you hadn't. Otherwise, I'd have sent them to you long ago. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but that's what I've been playing. So uh, I've we, we've rambled long enough on this section. So uh, we're gonna be back in just a minute. Uh, after the break, we're we're gonna deep dive on a topic uh, pertaining to uh, Kathy's uh, Kathy's rage. Um, and <laughs> it and was Mike, okay. It was a rage during the scene. It was not a rage after. I think I had some good points that were oh, not I know rage you did. worthy. Okay. Oh, I know you did. That's, that's why I want to dig into this. I, I, I think we have absolutely the, the perfect trio of people here for that subject. So, yeah, but two one. No, 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 uh, no. Thank <laughs> God I'm a female, and I can we just happen to have three people here that, that like Metroidvanias. I love Metroidvanias though too. Exactly, and that's this why I want to. not a Metroidvania play. game though. Yes, it is. So we'll Anyhow. get into it. All right, we'll get into it. <coughs> So yeah, with that said, break! And we're back with the third half of the show. This week, we're going to deep dive into uh, the, the the essence of a Metroidvania. Um, <laughs> no, there, there's, there, there's some there's some back and forthing on the subject here, and some of this came about from... Uh, from Kathy uh, finishing Ori um, on Twitch last night. Uh, some of this is bits of the conversation that I've had with various people in different parts over the last couple of years. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of actually, I'm excited to, to get to kind of put this conversation all together in one place tonight. So I, I want to start with, uh, since we kind of uh, put a pin in it for this section, Kathy... I, I'd like for you to uh, to come out and share your thoughts on Ori now that you've finished it. Okay. <clears throat> so, again, if, if you want to see the actual take on it, do go to my Twitch channel, Violet Storm, Storm with a zero instead of an O, <clears throat> where you can find that video. But, 
Music, really beautiful. Art style, beautiful. I love the characters. The story, I was really intrigued with it. That's what kept me going. I wanted to see how it ended. Gameplay? I don't know what the fuck they were thinking, but that gameplay was horrible, in my opinion. And it actually caused me to really not like the game. And in the end, especially with that last final rush of having to escape the the tree, and again, spoiler alerts, but... It's that a couple last, years old, we're good. I know, no, I still think you should do spoiler alerts because... In this day and age, some people don't see these games until years later. There's a lot of games that came out years ago that I still haven't played that I will probably play and then maybe don't want to have spoilers. So, That's anyway. Fair. But that was so frustrating and irritating and that I couldn't, that there was no, that the difficulty was so, went from being, we, there were parts of the game that had a very easy difficulty, um, then you go into the dungeons where the difficulty was like quadrupled and it was unexpected and there was no breathing room and it wasn't like a progression in most metroidvania games that i played where there is that progression in difficulty you go from playing really easily to boom you're hitting getting your ass handed to you and then it goes back to being somewhat easy and then boom you get your ass handed to you and then the very ending it's trying to incorporate everything that you learn, but at the same time, it's not very forgiving. So you have to almost be a perfectionist to get through that last part. And it frustrated me to the point where I finished the game, I wasn't satisfied. I was like, I don't like this game. I wasn't even happy that with the ending. Normally I feel a sense of accomplishment. I, felt, I feel a sense of, I did it. And you know, there's that, euphoria that comes from finishing a game and seeing the ending and watching the story finish and the completion and you're like yay even when you've had those difficult moments because let's be honest there's a lot of games that have difficult moments that frustrates you i mean we've talked about it before where you just can't beat a boss so you put it down come back the next day and then it's like that boss is the easiest piece of shit you've ever dealt with yeah i mean we've we've all had that but this game never felt like that and it was so sad that when I finally finished the game, instead of being having that sense of accomplishment, I just was like, I hate this game. I don't like this game. This was stupid. What was the point of all of that? And so, it's not on my list of favorite games. And unfortunately, it's due to that gameplay. It's due to that difficulty curve. That And that was, I was playing on normal mm -hmm. difficulty. I'd hate to see what the hell... I would have had to do on, like, extreme level, hard, whatever the top difficulty is. Right. Um, so a little, have more life, that's really the only difference. So, but that also brought up a question, and we kind of talked about this, I know you were in the chat, so we didn't really get to talk face to face, and I was just more spewing my thoughts, but, you know, it made me think, is it because I'm just older and I don't have the control? or the, the same motor skills that I used to have. My daughter fell in love with the game. She played it. She finished it, no problem. She's looking forward to the sequel. Me, I hate the game. There were a few glare there were a few moments of joy. I really liked the middle temple. It was a great mechanic and I had fun with those puzzles and I had fun getting through that. But the other the rest of it just was like this is stupid. It had no purpose in my mind. It just and frustration so and it just I, I i couldn't help but keep raging i mean larry kept telling me uh maybe you should put it down no i'm gonna finish this stupid game tonight because if i don't finish it i was not gonna come back to it that's the other thing i knew if i stopped i was never gonna come back so it just it's not a game i want to go back and play after all of that but the music's beautiful the art style is beautiful the gameplay just was not it could have been handled better I think so my my other question to you then is you commented that it's not a metroidvania <laughs> I, 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 I... I want to hear I want to hear more on this because I kind of want to dissect into that thought 
Well, you know, and, and I think I said it just more just to because I'm being bitchy about the game itself. It turns really... I think the reason why I said it is because I enjoy Metro Metroidvania-type games. Um, I enjoy the the exploration. I enjoy the not being having to look for that next upgrade to be able to move forward. Mm-hmm. Or I didn't feel like I had to. There were times I had to. And there were some things, but I didn't have to find everything. A lot of times, and I, I, and, and in Metroidvania games, you don't have to, but you do have to find most of the upgrades. Yeah. Um, you may not have to find every missile expansion. You may not have to find every um, heart container, but you know, you do have to find a lot of the main sources of your skills. I didn't have to do that for Ori. Like I, at the end, I was able to upgrade to. Being able to swim in water. I'm at the damn end of the game. That would have been helpful back then, but I didn't need it to get to that end game. So there was that issue I had that there were upgrades that might have been helpful with expo- exploration, but weren't needed to finish the game in a sense. So mm-hmm. in that regard, I say it's not Metroidvania. There are also. But. I mean, if you want to talk about looking at it from the the standpoint that there is that exploration, you do need to get some upgrades to get to the next area and to be able to do certain things, then yes, it has that Metroidvania aspect to it. So. I say it doesn't, it doesn't solidly hard lock a lot of things behind certain abilities and upgrades the way most Metroidvanias do, Mm -hmm. but it does lock some of it. It has the aspects of a Metroidvania game, but I don't know, but there, you know, I guess we also think of Metroidvania games with combat, combination of more combat and, um, the exploration, whereas Ori, I felt, was more platformer Mm -hmm. than combat. Yeah, it's... There wasn't really a lot of combat. I didn't have to kill guys. Right. That throws me, because I like you know, games where I get to destroy things. Lots of things. Bad guys. <laughs> you know, space pirates. Right. Now, to, to that end, and I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts, Michael, because Lord knows that's... Th- th- this has been a, a big piece of our friendship for, God, what, 20 years? Yeah. At least. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> But, but to me, there, there's two major components to most Metroidvanias. And you see some games in the genre lean more into one side or the other in a lot of cases. Um, you know, one being the, the combat side of things, the, the action piece, as it were. And the other side of that being the mobility aspect where you know you get upgrades that will give you more options in terms of movement um to to kind of take it down to a base component you know you've got take metroid as an example just because it's it's such a route that balances those two so well as a series the name Right, there's a reason that that's the the root word in there, or one of, or half of the root word, um, you know. But you've got your your combat upgrades, you know, things like your beams, your missiles, your bombs, and stuff. But then you've also got mobility upgrades that fundamentally change the way that you explore through a space, like the space jump, like the spider ball, and for my money. Ori to me is still very much a Metroidvania, but it leans almost exclusively, not entirely, but almost exclusively on the mobility side of things um, and, and lets go of almost all of the combat. Yeah, because... combat is entirely tertiary in this. Yes, it like, is. Um, the only time combat ever really becomes a part of it is if you grind for soul points or whatever the hell they're called. Right. Yeah. Um, that's really about it. Otherwise, yeah, it's entirely traversal based. 
But they're con- like, and that, I think that was the other issue I had with it, that their controls with it were bad. And we got to get into that, but continue. I'm sorry. No, it's, it's all right. I was just going to say, I, I think, though, that it doesn't make it any less Metroidvania, just that that's the that's the side of the equation that it chose to emphasize um, over the other. But does that um, the Metroidvania game then, if you don't, if you focus on one as opposed to having both? Because aren't Metroidvania games focus on both equally? No, Not apparently, very very few of them. Are, like like Larry said earlier, there are, certain games will tend to lean harder into one than more than the other. Um, and you know, like most of them will strike some kind of decent balance. I think, like Larry said, the uh, the Ori actually Ori takes much more of the exploration, as you know, and combat is entirely secondary. Um, I honestly, like, I still, I as I said, I still think in that regards, like, just the exploration alone, that makes it more of a Metroidvania than any other genre. And I I will say, just to kind of give you a, an example here, um, I think Hollow Knight might be might be the, the flip side of the coin to Ori, or maybe even Blasphemous, honestly. Yeah. Um, I say not Hollow Knight. Hollow Knight has a good combination of exploration and combat. I felt that was very equal. Mm-hmm. It, it does, and I, I want to clarify, I'm not necessarily talking exploration so much as I am mobility. Because okay. I, I think those are your two big pieces, because okay. you're going to get a big exploratory component no matter what. That's that's kind of like the, the crust of the pizza. Every pizza has a crust, but the balance of sauce toppings and everything else is what changes depending on where you're, whether you're talking Chicago style or New York style. Okay. Just as an example to translate it to things that we here okay. at the show always appreciate food. No, um, let me correct myself. <laughs> I felt that both the combat and the movement were equal in importance because you really had to almost find this, you almost had to find these their his next ability before you could get to areas that you needed to get to <clears throat> there and you also needed to do the combat there that's what i was going to say no I, I don't think you're wrong but i i do think though that and, and like i said i i'm i'm going to correct myself here and say that i think blasphemous is probably okay. the better polar opposite to Corey, but I I'm willing Hollow to agree Knight with you on that one. leads a little one. more into the combat side than the mobility side. That there is a shift, and I I didn't feel like Hollow Knight was as much of a 50-50 balance as, like, Metroid is, per se. I do think Hollow Knight has a little... Definitely has more combat focus in terms of its uh, ways of pushing forward through blocks than, uh, than it is mobility. Because there, there's honestly only a small handful of mobility upgrades, um, and I, I don't think they so much change the way that you move and explore through the space so much as it just makes a couple of things suddenly reachable that weren't. Well, again, it depends on how you use them, because I felt that they helped me get through the spaces better than... True. Again, that's, that's difference of opinions, so... So, but I, I, it's part of what I always, I I find fascinating in, in recent years as I spent some time thinking about it, I'm just randomly off and on about the genre in general is that the recipe for it is flexible. And, and I, I, I remember thinking over the years, you know, uh, and this came up in a big way. Um, God, it's been almost 20 years now it'll be 20 years next year that metroid prime came out that um it it raised the big question what makes a metroidvania a metroidvania because you had a lot of people going metroid prime is definitely a metroid game it's so a metroid game and subsequently therefore a metroidvania and you had a lot of other people that are like no it's not the fuck is wrong with you and I, I think 
you know, you, you had people in both camps and depending on which camp you fell in kind of determined what, what the important, what the more important ingredient was that made it a Metroidvania game. And so I'm, I'm kind of curious because uh, again, you're, you've kind of been my lifelong partner in this, in this genre more so than anybody else that I've ever really had, you know, up until recent years. But I'm curious, you know, what, what specifically sets, a, you know, the finds a Metroidvania game for you, Michael, because I know you haven't played the prime games. Um, because in my eyes, like, they're, they're shooters, then I can't do shooters. Um, like, I'm so bad at shooters. What defines... Oh, I, I, I believe you. I really do. Like, Larry has told me enough that I know most of the story anyway. Um, cause, you should you know, play it. You I know why it's not like a shooter? Should. Because you can lock onto your targets. That's what makes it different. You don't have to really aim. You just I have played, to lock on. I played through Other M, and the okay, simple... Other like, M is this whole other issue. I know. <laughs> well, just, just fucking listen to me. The, the part in Other M, where in order to fire missiles, you have to point the remote at the screen, and uh -huh. suddenly you go into first-person mode, that part freak me out so bad because suddenly I have to aim that I can't do it. Like, it's Aww. literal panic attacks. Dang, I'm sorry. And I can understand yeah. that because it's very jarring from the rest of the game. Yeah. yeah that would like, otherwise, okay. gameplay-wise, it wasn't a terrible game. Story-wise, it sucked. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, I still it, like the story! I stand by it that it's a great game if you can mute it. Yeah. Oh, shut like, up. I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> Samus shouldn't be... She's the you know, only of a cheesy ass Disney princess. Like he's not a cheesy ass Disney princess in that game. My God. Oh. Bullshit. Every every fifteen minutes, like I sure hope Adam lets me use this this time. Fuck that. Well, it's her in her youth. Okay. When you look at it, it's her in her youth. She grew. It was a growing story. She learned how to take care of herself. All right, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. No, but. What defines a Metroidvania more than anything else to me is the exploration. Like, the 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 fact that your upgrades are... Most of your upgrades are going to be traversal-based more than anything else. Something to help right. you climb higher or get through smaller spaces. Right. Like, the, the other part of Metroidvania, the Vania part, the Castlevania Symphony of the Night, is one of my all-time favorite games. Just because of so many hidden areas and yeah. all the, like... The mist form that allows you to get into certain areas and just all the weird shit. Like, you know what my favorite item in that whole fucking game was? Because there's so many items. Is there's a, I forget what they're called, but there's a pair of boots that all their description says is discreetly increase height. They make your character one pixel taller. <laughs> they have oh no, God. they have no other benefits at all. That is fucking phenomenal to me. <laughs> and I'm like, I've been obsessed with, like, because I mean, I grew up with Super Metroid. I, I played Super Metroid. Like, Super Metroid was the first Metroid I've ever beat. Um, and, and uh, like, because I remember getting lost really easy in the original one on Nintendo, and I just well, never went back to it. <laughs> well, well, and with the existence of Zero Mission, there's not really a good reason to. Exactly. Yeah. I have finished Zero Mission since. Um, well, and I Fusion. the original Metroid, so you <laughs> um on the nintendo at that too <laughs> you ain't special <laughs> um what's it called though like the the castlevania series like i specifically bought a ds I mean, a, a, yeah a ds just to continue buying the castlevania games yeah well those were um, good games because like the 3d castlevania games have for the most part been you know, varying degrees of garbage. Um, Lords of Shadows was a good game, but it didn't feel like a Castlevania game at all. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, although the story was actually really fucking good. Actually, you know what? Let me take that back. Certain points of the story were really good. Um, but overall, like, I don't know. As I said, they, they were okay, and I'm kind of glad they stopped with them, though. Yeah. But... Like, as I said, I'm, I'm upset that they haven't done any more of the, the 2D open world, I mean, not open world, but Metroidvania style ones. Mm -hmm. um, 
that's why I was happy when I finally picked up Bloodstain. I was worried that Bloodstain was going to be crap because almost every kick. I have this, I have this like curse that every time I throw money at a Kickstarter, it turns out mediocre at best. Aww. The amount of times I've thrown money at like a band to hey put out a new CD, then the CD comes out and it's meh. Um, it literally like a handful of times. Um, Indivisible, I threw money at that one, at that video game, and that was actually a decent game, but it wasn't, it wasn't spectacular. Like, yeah. the, it had a lot of potential that was, seemed like it was missed potential once it was finally re re released. Um, but Bloodstain turned out to be a lot better than I expected it to be. Mm-hmm. That was um, a good game. I'm still waiting for all the fucking DLC that was promised. But yeah, keep waiting. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I'm I I was looking and I think I think if I can find at a reasonable price the the steel book to with the the switch cartridge holder, I might actually spring to pick it up. That Here's that might be the piece that tips me over the edge, it honestly. Was, it wasn't sold with the steel case though. Mm-hmm. The steel case was sold entirely separately through Best Buy. Yeah. Um, and also, by the way, the steel case is not Switch size. I know. I saw that. Yeah, it's uh, PlayStation game sized. I'm okay with that. I've got all sorts of weird shit on my shelf that Fair enough. odd sizes. So. Yeah, like I went through a large ordeal to manage to get my hands on that shit. But um, I don't know. I said in these games also I love the the little the little details like like uh, the boots that discreetly increase height right. or the like just tell me they were called platform boots they were something like high high top boots or something like that okay um, this was in which one uh, Symphony of the Night Symphony of the Night oh I'll be looking at you guys keep going yeah but um what was it the uh, like Bloodstain had a part where there's just an open area with a piano and you can sit down and actually your character will play the piano. I found out if you have the fairy familiar out, she'll mm -hmm. sing while you're playing really? the piano. Yeah. Oh, that's it's cool. Completely Fantastic. minor detail that means fucking nothing, but it was amazing. You know? I love shit like that. Um, like just Ori... Unnecessary quirks. Yeah. Like Ori was... I literally picked up, like, okay, the story of me buying Ori, this is a fucked up story, is I saw a video, like a, like a trailer for it somewhere, and I'm like, that is the prettiest fucking game I've ever seen, I gotta see this. So I, I researched into it and found out Xbox only, and I mulled over it for about a month, and I finally bought an Xbox just for this game. I bought an Xbox for a $20 downloadable game. And I played it through like three or four times. And then eventually the system was just sitting. And I wasn't using it anymore. So, and I was like, I'll probably never end up going back to it. So I ended up giving the system to Larry as a wedding gift. Aww. And not two months later, I thought to myself, I really want to play Ori. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my dumbass goes and buys another fucking Xbox. You didn't buy so another I, one until you, the sequel got announced, if I remember correctly. Uh, right before it, yeah. And then when I finally bought that, then they're like, "Hey, we're gonna put it on Switch, like you motherfuckers." Story of my life, though. You didn't have your Switch yet, then either, though. Nope, nope, nope. So. But. Uh, it yeah i literally bought it because they yeah i bought it again what finally cemented it was the announcing the sequel it was going to be xbox exclusive yeah oh you guys are going to be disappointed they're just called secret boots oh are they yeah. i don't feel disappointed by that actually i kind of <laughs> like that it's just secret boots. but uh -huh. they are platforms i mean if you look at the item they got like a platform underneath where the sole the sole is like a little bit thicker uh-huh so then anyway there is a ton of items in that game that are completely useless. Yeah. Like there's there's one sword. It's a there's a cursed sword that every so often you'll try and swing it and it just won't draw from the sheath. 
Like, it's just a cursed sword. There's a food item that's a peanut that in order to eat it, your character flicks it up in the air and you have to walk, get under it and hold up. Otherwise, it hits the ground and is useless. There's so many little details like that that are just completely unnecessary, but fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now see, and, and you and I talked about this a few months ago, but uh, I have a hard time getting into the Castlevania stuff because of uh, a lot of the the layers of menu and crafting and everything else. I just I have no interest in. It just it pulls me out of the experience. Um, for some reason, somehow the DS one still clicked with me. I really liked them. I don't know what it was, but I just I haven't had that draw to really any other entries in the series besides the DS ones. Mm-hmm. So, uh, God, especially Dawn of Sorrow. Yeah, really the two, the two Sorrow adore. games were fantastic. Order of Ecclesia, I actually really liked. Order of Ecclesia is a very much a precursor to Bloodstained, though. Like, there's a okay. lot of very similar concepts between the two, actually. Um, That's the only DS one I didn't get around to playing. Um, Portrait of Ruin was good, too. I liked that one a bit, too. I have it's... Order of Ecclesia if you want to borrow it sometime. I would, actually. Uh, I liked Portrait as well, but I still think Dawn was my favorite. Oh, yeah. But, like, uh, uh, those were all fantastic, but I still think Symphony of the Night was a better game. Like, it was just, there was bigger, it it was just bigger and there was more to it. And, Mm -hmm. like, I don't know, as I said, I enjoyed it. Like, that one, and as I said, I ignored, I didn't find that one until near the end of the lifespan of the PS2. Okay. Um, a friend of mine had it. It's like, here, you need to check this out. Right. And for a while, it was not... It was definitely on the scarce side. Yeah. But, I mean, now it's it's on a plethora of platforms digitally, at least. So, I mean, it's it's fairly readily available, at least, again. Yeah. <laughs> so, which uh, part of me wonders if that's... I don't think it's by any means the whole thing, but... I do think there there's a component of that that's lended itself to the the boom of the Metroidvania genre in terms of the indie scene and digital distribution is that that gateway has been reopened um, or is much easier to open again uh, in terms of access to that game as well as Super Metroid. Um, and so you, you've got more people kind of coming into it or being able to play it for the first time that maybe didn't get their hands on Symphony on PS1 when the scarcity went up and the price went through the fucking roof. So, I, I, I think it's... I, I don't even think it's a big piece of the puzzle, but I do think maybe it's it's in there somewhere. So... But, I think also, like, a lot of indie developers are just going that route because they're, you know, it's a good game genre. Mm-hmm. They know that, generally generally speaking, the moment you slap the label Metroidvania on it, there's a decent chunk of the population that's going to be interested. Mm-hmm. Um, like Time Spinner, I never would have looked at Time Spinner if it hadn't been for the fact that somebody said Metroidvania with it, and I was like, all right, I'm interested. Right. Was it's it that it's that Rick and Morty yeah. meme. You son of a bitch! I'm in. Yeah. Um, We're all fucking saps for that. We really are too. Fuck! I now need to write that meme. <laughs> New um, indie game. I don't care. Metroidvania. You son of a bitch! I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's factually accurate. <laughs> it is. It's kind of terrifying. God, we're whores. Yes. Yes, we are. So, but yeah, not me. Jeez. <laughs> no, no, I was I talking like very specifically games. about I'm Michael and I on that one. Wait, what? I was talking very specifically about Michael and I on that I one. I know you were. I'm just making <laughs> sure that the rest of the audience knows that I am not a part of this. <laughs> See, and and that's the thing. Like, I generally stick to a handful of specific series that I've been following for a while. Mm. The Biggest exception to that, though, is the moment someone says Metroidvania. Mm-hmm. 
Like, I will try a Metroidvania before any uh, anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, See, and I'm the type who will play, you throw a game at me, I'll try it, give it my... I'll play any type of game. But that, I think, comes from also having played lots of different types of games growing up, too. So, you know, we kind of did everything. And that was kind of, oh, that was kind of cool, growing up with all different types of games and seeing that evolve. No, and I, I can appreciate that. I mean, I, I had a fairly wide scope, but I, oh, I eventually... Oh, shut up, you youth. You youngin'. <laughs> I don't want to... Let's not hear from the kitty pool. <laughs> I just happily honed in on the ones that I liked the most as I grew. <laughs> so... I mean, I guess no, I really don't have a... I guess I don't have a place to talk since, you know, I like Fortnite and everybody hates, you know, hates on it in this group <clears throat> no we just like to give you a hard time about it there's a difference no 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 but so but I, I think that that's a good place to to put a pin in this for this week um so before we go as always I want to thank uh my partners in crime Kathy and Michael for joining me this week um thank you to everybody who uh tuned in this week and uh downloaded us or watched us on youtube or you know however you so chose to ingest us into your life um and and make us a part of you which make no mistake if you've heard any of this we are now part of you on a cellular level and you will never get that shit out i don't care how hard you scrub sounds dirty so it is It's dirty like the subscribe button that you should hit, but don't ask permission first because it's totally into the consensual non-consent. So. Oh my god. Seriously. Uh, And and in those other places, you can substitute subscribe button for add to RSS feed or on Twitch, you can substitute in the follow where uh, that also, you know, on our Twitch channel, we've also got, speaking of, this is the perfect time to, you know, toss that out there. We are building towards that Blasphemous Collector's Edition giveaway from Limited Run Games as well. Um, we get to 200 followers on our Twitch channel. We're going to be live streaming some Blasphemous and give away that uh, Collector's Edition copy on Switch to somebody in the chat that day uh, on that stream. So uh, if you haven't already... You should totally follow us on our Twitch channel. That's twitch.tv slash world one one podcast, all spelled out. And uh, you should also get your friends to uh, follow us on Twitch so that way we can get to the 200 mark and somebody can win that fucking game. Because uh, that shit's dope. We were just looking on eBay again and that's sh- the, the pre ordered copies that I haven't even gotten in hand yet are running up to like the $400 mark on eBay. It's ridiculous. I want my copy. Cannot yeah. wait. As soon as it gets here, LeGuru will ship it to you. I know. So, but, uh, which it's supposed to be next month is what it's still saying. I know the standard edition copies have shipped out and that cover art is fucking gorgeous on there. Woo. So, but in any case, um, so with that said, thank you to everybody for uh, tuning in. Thank you to my partners in crime. And uh, we'll see you again next week here at World 1-1 Podcast. Say goodnight, everybody. Yo.